saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only. See store for details. At AdvanceAutoParts.com, you can find the part you need and get it delivered straight to your home from the comfort of home. Plus, when you order $75 or more from AdvanceAutoParts.com, your shipping is free. Imagine ordering from the comfort of your pajamas, a smoking jacket, a go commando, whatever. Spend 75 bucks and the shipping's free. And so are you, man. AdvanceAutoParts.com. Service is our best part. Advanced Auto Parts. Be signed for details. AM 1260 KLYC in the forecast. A good chance of showers today. In fact, a 100% chance of rain today. Winds could be gusty at times, up to 26 miles per hour. South Southwesterly winds, 14 to 20, becoming west-northwest this afternoon, gusting as high as 26 miles per hour. New precipitation amounts today between a tenth and a quarter of an inch of rain possible. Showers likely tonight, and a uh, chance of showers off again, on again, all the way through Thursday. High temperature next couple of days should be near 50. Overnight lows in the low 40s. That's the weather, AM 1260 KLYC. Good morning, Yamhill County. Good you are, morning. You are tuned right here to the root of it. To the root of it with Ray and Kyle, uh, so far sponsored by Oregon State Extension, apparently. <laughs> They're the only ones that love us today. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, we are your uh, your local radio, uh, your local radio show for all things gardening here in Yamhill County because we feel like we've well, we've been around long enough to see what's uh, we've, going on. We've, we've killed enough things, we know what to do. Right, we know what not to do, at least, and we can find the answers out on what to actually do. We've got a great show for you today. We are going to be talking about, Ray, what is it? Uh, slugs, bugs, and spiders. That makes sense, because uh, we have seen some spiders, right? Uh, more than a few. Um, it's interesting that there's several myths about spiders we'll get into later. Uh, like... You're never more than three feet from a spider. I've heard that before, and that is creepy, and almost, uh, well, think about the other bugs that might be around. At that time. Yeah, that only <laughs> applies if you're outstanding in your yard. So we do have the bugs, we have the slugs uh, coming up, but... Uh, <laughs> Listen to the music one more time. <laughs> but we do actually have uh, the, the weather to get into. And uh, and I don't know, if it, it was a little red this morning. Yes, it's going to be a blustery day, folks. It's uh, not the day to go out and fly the kite. R well, and well, actually, it could be. It, it's going to be the perfect day to go fly a kite. We were talking about it uh, earlier, and 60 mile an hour winds are possible. With steady winds of 25 plus, With 25 miles an hour, that's a heck of a breeze. Especially if it's just constantly yeah. coming at you. <laughs> well, we're going to find out whether or not your trees are rutted. Trees, uh, well, what about those branches that still have leaves on them? They, um, they won't by this afternoon. Right, exactly. I have one of those, you saw my willow that's out there, and uh, it likes to fall down because... These storms seem to hit right before the leaves get a chance to fall. I, I, I used to have a, a sweet gum tree, though, that would hang on to its leaves till after the first of the year. Uh, didn't matter how hard it blew. It would wait until the nastiest, rainiest day, uh, preferably right around Rose Bowl time, so that it would be something that you could go out and do at halftime. Well, and th that's the problem with this willow that I have is I can't properly take care of it because it, it doesn't adhere to the weather patterns that we actually have. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do, they do hang on for quite some time, but most of the rest of the deciduous trees, those that leave to lose their leaves on purpose, uh, will be pretty well cleaned up by the end of this weekend. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, what kind of trees do you have out there that uh, still have the leaves on? I mean, I mean, my apple trees don't have the leaves on them anymore. There's very few on the maples around our house. Yeah. Very few. Yeah. Um, the little purple Japanese plum next door has a few left. Yep. But that's about it. Yep. Everything is falling. Yeah. Right they're, getting, they're getting gone. If you have any questions about anything we are chatting about today on the show, please call us at uh, 503 435 1260. 
1260. Uh, that's KLYC Radio here in Yamhill County. That is right. And so we got a little frost spell there. I don't know if you, you recognize that. that yeah, I, I scraped it off. It was the perfect morning, I guess, to lay down my lime that I was talking about. Did, um, did you get her done? Yeah, it got done, and it got done very quickly. Um, I had actually just gotten in the shower, apparently, when they arrived. And as I was getting out of the shower, I received a phone call from the neighbor um, concerned that her horses might be being poisoned at that moment. Mm. So because I had no warning that, the, that these people were, were bringing their, um, their, uh, their lime right there. So thankfully, um, she knew that the, it was just lime. So it wasn't that, that big of a deal. But uh, there I am having to explain my, my lime situation to the neighbor. Well, the horses aren't going to go over in the bare field. There's nothing to eat anyway, but right. you hope. Right, exactly. But, yeah, her, her concern was the trucks are, are depositing this probably about 50 feet from said horses. Oh. You know, 100 well, feet. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like putting a bed sheet over everything, though. Right. So, yeah. it's, so anyway, um, we're going we're gonna to be discussing things that you need to actually... No, just because it's November doesn't mean it's time to hang up the rake. I've already done that. You did? No, actually, I haven't. I know that uh, if it wasn't going to be raining, if it wasn't going to be blustery, I would need to... This is... I can see the green stuff on the ground that I don't want there. This is the perfect time to kill it uh, because of where it is in the stage... its stages in life. So uh, the the dandelions, they've, they've just started getting yellow again where I don't want them uh, to get yellow. They so do. I would love to just spray it all, but... Uh, uh, you might might be a little late for the weed be gone. Yeah, uh, it it needs like sixty degree weather to actually yep exactly. you know, for the for the plants to take it up and take it into their leaves. Uh, it needs to be fifty to sixty degrees minimum, or they just don't. And do so that. what I'm hoping is is since it's going to be about forty nine degrees, the plants are going to be shutting down anyway, so they might not be you know they're 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 not building up. Well, it, it'll eventually get them because if it doesn't get washed off. Yeah. Uh, if there's any kind of warmth in the sun at all for a couple of hours, they'll they'll suck a little bit of it down. But it'll it'll take weeks for a dandelion to finally curl up. It won't curl up in 24 hours like it says on the bottle. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> right. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen, folks. So did you get affected by the frost? Anything anything happened to you? Uh, actually, my loving spouse let me take her car out of the garage, so. I didn't have to. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about me. No, so far I haven't. Uh, the giant zinnias that were left in the garden, they all shriveled up. Oh, nice. So now I can, I'm not going to get that last blossom out of them, I, especially now since I went and yanked them out of the dirt. Right. Threw them in the green box. It was time. Yeah, it was time to let go. But that was an interesting experiment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that again next year. I think I'll just overseed with uh, a variety of annuals and see what happens because th these guys came out really gorgeous. Right. The the neighbors enjoyed them anyway. And overseeding is always a good thing when you're dealing with the annuals, I guess, huh? Yeah. Okay. It, it, and just let nature take its course. It's, you don't have to um, actually pre-plant and, and grow... Uh, a lot of times, if you just look at the back of the package, it'll say when to seed them. And if you go ahead and sprinkle them out and just scuff them under like a quarter inch of dirt or peat moss or mulch or compost or something, they'll do what God intended them to do. Oh, that, and, and they'll do it well, too, yeah. Um, did you know that we're streaming live right now on the Internet? Really? Video. It actually, all actually I, I did know that. You did know that. I hope so, because uh, you're looking at the screen right now. Yeah. Um, but it is uh, klyc.us. If you go there, there's a link that will take you actually to OregonPulse.com, which is where we are streaming. And this is so much fun. Uh, Yamhill County Gardening is now a worldwide enterprise. It is. The NSA is listening to it. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah, we got to be careful what we say now about burying things. Right, exactly, or or any of the the hot hot button words that they probably have. Yeah, like 
And now I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Exactly. Not going to do that. But to wrap up on the weather, let's go ahead and say that uh, we're looking at the low 50s for quite some time with showers. Yeah, fall is fell, winter's here, and it's colder than yep. needs to be. But um, thankfully for the for the wetness, though, it doesn't look like we're going to be having a, a frost. So, so we don't have to worry about that. No, it's it's not going to frost again for a little while. It's just going to be regular old fall rain. Yeah. Um, we've got three weeks of fall yet to get through, and then winter hits. So it's showed us what it could be the rest of the season. Right, exactly. Um, which is uh, which could lend us into uh, the other topic, which is our, our calendar that we have at the uh, extension office. Uh, things to do in the months this month being November. What, what catches your eye there? Well, uh, the, the fun thing to do is if you're going to be doing any indoor gardening, now's the time to go ahead and start f forcing bulbs indoors, paper whites, uh, hyacinths, uh, things of that nature that you want to grow on the windowsill. Uh, you can go ahead and, and get them started today. Uh, hyacinths will uh, be up and, and blooming in a, oh, what? six eight weeks so around the turn of the holidays you'll have this wonderful perfumey scent in your kitchen they actually work pretty quick paper whites are another one that uh, are fun to make various kinds of bases for winter time and and give them away to people for uh, Christmas presents and you've got uh, seven weeks they'll they'll be up and sprouted good by then but fun things like that to do you can do on a rainy afternoon uh, it's also, if, you, if you're a garage gardener this time of the year, uh, like a lot of us are, it's a good time to go ahead and finish putting your tools away, prepping your tools, cleaning your shovels, oiling your uh, scissors, change the oil in the mower. In the mower. The lawnmower is an important thing to, yep. to take care of, and I neglect mine, but I really, I abuse that thing. Um, but... Uh, to even uh, make sure the blades are sharpened yep. because you don't want to be cutting with a, with a dull blade. Um, yeah, well, well, if you service it now, you won't have to go through that half a can of starting fluid and, and 27 pulls right. in February when the first blade of grass and sunshine. Right. And I did do my, my last mowing this week. That is one of the things that I got to. Um, I don't have a riding mower yet, and instead of using my push mower, I got on the tractor. And it is the messiest <laughs> mowing machine that is out there. It is vulgar. It uh, it leaves big, deep track marks. And uh, my lawn, while looking short and trim, it really it looks like somebody just took a hatchet for some reason to everywhere in it. But it, I needed to get that the grass trimmed down. Well, I, I saw the nice young men drive by on their mowers. <laughs> Very polite men that just come by for some reason yeah, every, every year long. Yeah, every Thursday they drive by, and the next thing I know, I've got this beautiful green lawn again right outside my deck. <laughs> I love it. How nice. Yeah, I I don't care if I ever mow another lawn. <laughs> ever. I'm sorry. Ever, right. Um, oh, I'm looking at this thing, and I'm, I'm seeing check potatoes in storage and remove any going bad. That reminds me, I need to pick my potatoes. Uh, Going to be pretty easy digging. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just if you've got a dry spot to lay them out, uh, like in a garage or, or downstairs, do you, do you have a basement? I do not have a basement. Uh, Some place where you can lay them out and let the skins kind of harden off for a few hours before you, before you, you know, let the, uh, you don't have to really scrub them up much, just knock the dirt off. and uh, Because the dirt will actually bring more moisture right. out that you want. Yeah, yeah. you, you want to want to let the, the skins dry out pretty good before you throw them into the sack. That'll help prevent the mold and mildews from forming in the storage area. But uh, And if you've already done that, like back in October, uh, when it was actually a good time to a sunny time to no, dig potatoes. The appropriate time to pick them. I wasn't going to say it, that. It definitely is. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a horrible gardener, and we all know that, and that's why I'm talking about <laughs> gardening right now on the radio. It's a learning experience for all of us. Right, exactly. And then you're also supposed to uh, place a portable cold frame over your rows for your winter vegetables. And that's uh, presumably to protect you against the, the frost. 
Right. And uh, the pelting rain damage that might be coming down. Well, if you've gone ahead and, and seeded your, your winter gardening with uh, things that don't really need pollinators, like uh, beets, carrots, onions, uh, various lettuces and leafy crops, you want to protect them from the rain. They'll get, you don't have to water them because they'll get plenty of water just from the moisture in the air. Um, maybe once a month you throw a little moisture in there and then they'll, they'll make their own little... Right, because it's going to be raining around them. Right. So, so they'll be able to get... Uh, y but it's the damage from the constant rain hitting the leaves, hitting the soil. Um, you know, because when it's hitting the soil, it's spreading it around and exposing the roots that don't need to be exposed. Well, so a lot more damage can come from the rain than the benefit. It makes it more work to have to clean things up, too. It's, it's really handy to, to pick your uh, lettuces and your spinach out of a cold frame that has been covered, because then all you have to do is rinse it off. Right. You don't have to actually scrub dirt and... Uh, well, you've got to look out for the slugs, though. Mm, uh, that's another good thing about covering it. It, it does have a tendency to prevent uh, creepy crawlies from getting into them. Which is interesting, isn't that? Yeah. Uh, because it prevents, uh, you know, the flying things usually because it, pr it puts that barrier up, but uh, things aren't usually crawling up... Uh, wooden posts or not something. too much right um another thing to uh, take care of uh in this time of the season especially early in november is to go ahead and mulch your blueberries for next spring uh, put out fresh sawdust if it's been a while uh, beautiful time for blueberries uh i equate this time um to my time in colorado where they have the aspens the changing of the aspens where everything just you just see fields of gold at the blueberries fields right now, everything is just that salmon, bright pink, and uh, it's pretty amazing to see. If you can find some good, well-rotted manure with a lot of straw in it... That oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, that isn't that beautiful? That is Beautiful good. blueberry fields of manure. Well, no, I was, I was thinking about your rhubarb and your asparagus for <laughs> okay. next spring. I'm right. sorry. Uh, and in your flower beds, if you've had slug and bug damage... Uh, towards the later part of the year, go ahead and rake up, you know, trim off the leaves because they're, if they're annuals, they're probably done anyway. Um, and a lot of perennials, like mahasas, I, I flatten them. Um, and then rake up everything really good down, uh, even if you need to re mulch, recompost a little bit. Uh, but rake up everything because that's where the slugs are going to be laying their eggs for next spring. Yeah, when um, I was just over at a friend's and the and there's so many leaves in the backyard that I just, all I saw were little slugs emerging from, from these fields oh, of, yeah. of leaves. So the, it is really important to rake all of that stuff up, or leaf blower. I'm dreaming of a leaf blower um, because for me that just seems so much easier than just pulling a rake. Well, you can cut down on the slug population pretty tremendously just by making sure they don't have any place to lay their eggs this fall. Right. Um, Surprisingly enough, the eggs will overwinter really well, even with frost. They, they come with their own little insulated sacks, and a good percentage of them will overwinter in the egg sacks. And so if you get all that kind of stuff, um, the protective layer that uh, keeps them warm all winter long, get that raked up and put in the garbage. Um, I wouldn't mulch it because then you're just going to have slugs in your mulch pile. Right, exactly. And then when you can put your mulch back out on your garden next spring, you just reseeded the slugs. <laughs> Slug it. It's a Slug vicious mulch. process. Right. Yeah, but anyway, um, don't forget to, uh, if you have an in-ground sprinkler system, drain it and make sure you put some kind of insulation. How do you drain it? How do you drain an in-ground sprinkler system for those that don't know? I uh, have one. If Shut off the main water feed to start with. All right. Then open the valve, and if you have a, a low end to a yard, make sure that you expose that particular end, either in your feed line or your drip irrigation system. And then once you've shut off the main feed, open up the valve to the sprinkler system to let the air gravity suck it out. All it's right. the easy way. Right. And here in McMinnville, they, they, they force you to have your valve system checked so that it doesn't 
bleed back into the water system. Oh, well, that sounds really good for, for everybody, so that the water isn't contaminated with anything that m it you might put back in there. does sound good. I, I just cringe. It sounds like it might be a pain for you, though. It is. As a resident to go through this civic duty. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's much easier for me to just push the little air release valve and let it drain. <laughs> exactly. So that there's nothing in there to, that will... But uh, that's, the, that's the main thing, is to shut off and insulate the main feed valve and then open up the valve to the water system uh -huh. and let it drain naturally. There we go. It, uh, it's a very simple process. doesn't take very long. Water, water will just gravity feed right out. And that way, you then make sure you do insulate all your valves for any residual water that might be in there, though. Uh, you don't want it to freeze up and then next spring... That's, that's where you take that styrofoam cup-looking thing and, and yeah. put that over your, your, uh, your water. Well, you can, I mean, you can go over to Restore and buy used or, or recycled insulation and just fill the box with recycled insulation. It's not expensive. Right, and this is just to prevent it, because water tends to expand when it freezes, right? Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just need to protect it from the frost. And so when that happens, then it can break the bi pipes, it can break plastic, uh, whatever you might be having. Oh, it's... it's a Extremely tacky, and then... Um, if we're with this wind, though, make sure that you, if you have any really tender e evergreens, like that were just newly planted this year, kind of protect them, tie them up, uh, kind of protect them from the wind. Um, limbs of uh, evergreens that uh, look like they're getting a little thin, trim off lower limbs. Otherwise, they're going to end up on your lawn, you know, in the middle of the night or bouncing off the roof of your house. Um, the one thing you don't have to do anything with is ornamental grasses. That's what makes ornamental grasses such a neat landscape additive. You just let them go. That they that way, when we do get the snow, they give texture to the to the lawn, and you can tell where things are at. Right, because dead grass it, it accents the live things that might be in your garden or the other yeah, dead wait, things. Yeah, wait, wait till next spring uh, when things are getting ready to sprout, and then mow it off. No, it is one thing that uh, I have come to appreciate here in Oregon is the, the different kinds of grasses that you have because you, you just have, you know, like a foot little print of this grass and it, and it really accents the other plants that are around it. It is a, a good time, though, to uh, plant uh, bare root crops. This is the last time to, oh, like uh, bare root trees and shrubs so that they'll... Uh, get a little bit of uh, root start when in their dormant stage. And another thing you can do is it's uh, the last round of bulbs. In fact, uh, my homeowners association is planting bulbs today. I'm going to have to go over and bum a sack and ask them where they want to be planted later, I'm pretty sure. But now's a good time to plant your spring bulbs, tulips, hyacinths, crocus, daffodils. Uh, we're going to take a little break right now. But uh, if you have any questions, give us a, a jingle at 503-435-1260, and we'll be right back. It will be an arduous journey of epic proportions, venturing out into the great unknown, exposed to the rugged, unforgiving elements, struggling for survival. When so you're going car camping for the weekend. Here at Les Schwab, we can get you travel ready in no time. That's because every tire we sell comes with lifetime protection, including free pre-trip safety checks and more, plus a great price. That's our best tire value promise. I could hug you. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. AM 1260-KLYC, a reminder that a benefit art and wine auction will be held at the Amity Dayton Art Fest, Saturday, November 2nd, 5 to 8 p.m. at Coelho Winery, 111 5th Street in Amity. Proceeds will help build community projects in both Amity and Dayton. Oral and silent auctions, appetizers, cheeses, and chocolates from local restaurants and artisans, music by pianist Richard Johnson. Local guests who will attend include Tony Tyree, Marilyn Warnicks, and Richard Thompson, and more artists will be represented in the auction. $25 in advance or $30 at the door. For more info, call Mary 
at 835-1508. 835-1508. Benefit Art and Wine Auction. Amity Dayton Art Fest, Saturday, November 2nd, 5 to 8 p.m. at Coella Winery in Amity. A reminder from AM 1260 KLYC. And we're back here uh, to the root of it right here on KLYC, uh, your local gardening source. On uh, We are currently streaming online right now, klyc.us. That'll give you the link to go to oregonpulse.com. Interesting, right? Oh, it is. Uh, back back to slugs, though. Uh, oh, you want to go that way? Uh, yeah. I, t- <laughs> I want to get done with slugs. <laughs> okay. I really want to get done with slugs. <laughs> I hate slugs. I understand I, they're, that. They're not an endangered species except by me. <laughs> uh, I'm. I, the sad thing about slugs is that they are invertebrates, and they can stretch out to like 20 times their length, so they can slither on cracks uh under boards uh under debris and go lots of places where you wouldn't expect them to be but the best thing you can do to prevent slugs next year because you already know which plants they ate you you were cranky about that in august when you you went out and looked at your hostas and looked like somebody shot it with a shotgun right so now is the time to disturb the nursery process. Rake up the debris, pick up old boards, cans, plastic bags, pieces of styrofoam, anything that is looks like it's flat on the ground, that's where slugs are going to lay their eggs because they can get under there. And if you get all that stuff picked up, you're going to cut your slug population by a tremendous amount. Right, so they're going after under the tree bark, fallen logs, Underneath the rocks and planters, yes, you will always find one in a planter, won't you? Same planters, way. yeah, planters like that are out on the deck. You you think that the water catch basin is flush with the boards, so that that should be safe. Lift that thing up and see what's living underneath right, there. Right, exactly. Maybe As, even in the water tray itself too. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's kept nice and and moist. That's true. Yeah, and. Slug eggs will, will, will last all winter long, sadly. <laughs> sadly. <laughs> <laughs> hate them boogers. Yeah, I can tell. So um, why don't we talk about a little bit of the science that goes into the slug, because they do have that mucus that is uh, that they're probably famous for, and uh, that's because they're made up mostly of water, right? Right. And uh, they must generate this mucus to survive because they have a tendency to dry up very quickly. Well, they also use it as the little pathway for their little skittery feet to to travel on. Right, and if they didn't do that, uh, they wouldn't be able to travel. That's why, you know, when you put salt on a slug, it tends to die quickly. That's because all of the water is getting pulled away from its body. Right. So uh, slugs osmosis. and snails are uh, gastropods. Yes, that is correct. The, yes. the feet are on the stomach. Oh, yes. And they're very, very tiny little, like, little hairy feet. Which still, (laughs) I really don't (laughs) respect (laughs) slugs. Uh, Sad thing is, uh, there's not much that in nature will eat them except a few birds, jays, again with the uh, starlings, they eat them. Uh, And it's because the mucus does not taste good. Because I think we've, I've talked about this, Um, the chickens that we have, I can put out in front of them banana slug after banana slug, which for me, if I were to see that and I were some kind of animal that ate worms, I might think that that would be really good and tasty, but they can't get past that taste yeah, of the mucus. Yeah, chickens are useless for that. <laughs> they are useless. Ducks are good. Ducks and geese. I have heard geese. that ducks are good, but ducks make noise, right? I mean, there's a wow, 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 wow. Yeah, but that's when you know they're really happy eating your slugs. <laughs> <laughs> they're saying thank you. <laughs> right, exactly. But, uh... The the really the best thing to do is just although I did hear about there's some new phosphate slug baits like oh. th- like the iron slug baits I see which is not uh, dangerous for pets and iron though huh yeah iron because I know that you put down you can lay down car- uh, copper because when they touch that it's like licking a nine volt battery for them right 
So so copper is good, but if you have a an iron based bait like like sluggo? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's iron phosphate. Uh. And and then now there's there's new phosphate based slug baits yes. which apparently taste good to slugs and it kills them dead. But it doesn't bother your pets. So if the pet goes out and rolls in the bark dust cuz it needed to scratch its back and then cleans itself off, the phosphate slug baits are Perfect not supposed fine. to make them really sick. Right. Just as long as they're not eating a box of it. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep it out of the... Uh, don't, don't roll around in a box of it either. Um, but one of the uh, the, uh, the things about the anatomy of the slug are the, the feelers that are on the top of their head. And uh, one, the upper pair is for light sensing, and that's the uh, eye spots is what they call it. And the lower one is for smelling. So they've got eyes and nose. That's what those feelers are. That you, pretty much everything else is undiscernible on a slug's body, uh, but but you see those things and uh, they're they're looking at light and they're smelling. Well, the the larger slugs you can tell where they've laid their eggs. Like you mentioned the Madana slugs, because their their egg sacs look like little groups of little white BBs. Like the size of BBs or smaller yeah. than BBs? Oh, really? No, the the bigger slugs have bigger eggs right and you can actually see where they're at oh my gosh and so that's that's a good indicator that uh where they're intending well with the big slugs of course you're going to get the little the, those little brown slimy creatures that really do a lot of damage to plants because they can crawl up the stem of a plant and just munch all night and you get up the next morning and the corners of the leaves are gone and <laughs> yeah yeah, I know. And and w- speaking of the reproduction, I didn't realize that the slugs are actually hermaphrodites. Right. They're b- they're but they require a partner. No. They well, they okay, but they they use a partner, also. I thought they were all hermaphrodites. They are, but they intertwine, intertwiningly. Really? Yeah. No. Uh, it's they're bisexual and can lay an average of twenty to thirty eggs in each cluster. See, uh, it says they can do it all by themselves. Well, they can, yeah, absolutely. So you get two slugs laying eggs together. I don't, I, you know. Oh, that's just <laughs> wrong. It, it's good. <laughs> that's just wrong. Yeah, yeah it is. It, Referring it's only to slugs, folks. Right. It, it is. It is a. Uh, it is a confusing reproduction system to me. It does. It doesn't seem like something I'm. I'm into. I guess I, I into. Or just <laughs> shut up. Oh, well, we got to clean up more than the slugs. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's not something that's easily understood because one of the things that I was uh, reading about is is there can actually be a moment where the parts get intertwined and actually one of the parts has to be chewed off and so so then there's somebody gonna chew us off right now somebody's gonna chew us off right now and say hey that about slugs yeah uh let's get this uh phone call picked up right now let me get switched over to here hello good morning good morning um i am trying to find your station my roommate took it off your station and i don't know what you're playing with at the moment Oh, she's looking for the uh, website station. I am looking for it for my radio. Oh, on the radio. We're, we're at 1260, 1260 AM. Mm-hmm. And should be coming in. Where are you located? Um, I'm up in Dayton. I had it for a while, and then my roommate unplugged it and did something to it, and now I'm trying to find it again. In Staten. In Dayton. 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 Right. Oh, okay. Scare me to death. <laughs> no. So yeah, we're at we're at twelve sixty AM. Okay. Are you playing music right now or is it just No, you should be hearing our our dulcet tones chit chatting about, about slugs yeah, and other gardening creepy right crap. Now. You're actually you, you called into our call in radio show that's uh on live right now. Okay. <laughs> and bless your heart for doing so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And someone has found us. We are technical support. We are the it. <laughs> <laughs> we are the it. Uh, so let's go back to slugs. Um, 
because that is something that we can close off the topic with. Uh, we talked about the mucus. Um, they've got two types of mucus, one that they put on their back and one that they put on their bottom. Um, and then that, that stuff that's on the bottom has little fibrous stuff s- so that it doesn't actually slide down when it's vertical. So that's no. What, yes. Little fibrous right. mucuses. Cilia-like legs. Right. They skitter along. Yeah. And the larger they get, the more pronounced those invisible those things become. <laughs> you yeah, can you see ever, them you more ever turn one over and look at it? Uh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You have to. Yeah. Oh, man. They're they're kind of a, a miracle of engineering, but absolutely, uh, they are destructive. They are hard to get off of a boot. And I I really I'm not sure there is a. They do eat certain debris and bacteria. But you could, if you want to find the positive, they are decomposed. I mean, they they eat the you know the fungi and stuff like that too. So they absolutely serve a purpose. It's just as a gardener, it's not the purpose that you want. No, because the very first new bright green shoots is what they seem to like to eat best because mm. it's the most tender thing for their scroungy little mouths to crunch on. Like for a decaying forest, slugs. Slugs are okay. great. That's yep, exactly yep. where they, they belong. They belong out on a rotten log. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> in my hosta bed. <laughs> right, exactly. That, I consider that quite inhospitable. Right. But there is a new thing called slug defense that was developed in Washington State and does an excellent job of keeping slugs out of areas uh, when they put in new fences and things. And actually, it's the um, one of the most popular method of c- controlling slugs today is using uh, commercial slug bait products. But if you have pets, you got to really be careful what you put out because some of the crystalline uh, slug baits are very damaging to pets. Uh, can make them extremely sick, inf- uh, mess up their digestional tracts, uh, can cause some serious damage to cats when they clean their fur, or dogs that'll eat almost anything. Once again, always important to read the label because it, it will uh, ex- it should explain that on there. You know, don't it has a re-entry period of wh- when you want to use it. But if you want to go the organic route, you always just use the beer traps, right? Yeah, that's true. And and apparently that you don't have to feed them a good IPA either. Right? No, no. You can just go out and the just get the local swill. Yeah. What the Cheapest on-sale beer works just fine. And for those that are not aware, the uh, the slugs are actually attracted to the yeast in the beer. So you you dig a little, you, you know, you cut a can of beer in half, or and then you dig it into the soil so that it's in the path of where the slugs are going. And being attracted to the yeast, they will just then fall right in and be done with. Old pie pans work really well because you can you oh can yeah. ca- you can kind of. Uh, Squiggle them down into the mulch so that there's a nice level crawling field. Right, and you've also got wider area right. to cover there, too. Yeah, And the slugs crawl in, drink the beer, and die. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if, if you're kind-hearted, it's a good way to kill slugs. That's right. They that's die with a is. grin. And then you can feed them to the ducks, and that's the new duck uh, delicacy. Could be uh, beer-killed slugs. Drunk slugs. Uh, drunk slugs, and then you get the... Pate from the from the duck liver or something. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Fancy no, it, it's it's been well processed. <laughs> I'm going I'm going to believe that. <laughs> but anyway, that's about it for slugs today. Uh, another thing that we we're going to discuss is uh, just bugs in general. Bugs, contrary to a lot of people's fears, do not search out your house to crawl into. Now. Well, except for box elder beetles and they stink see bugs. It. Right, exactly. They see my house uh, or, or any house in general, and they're like, well, there's a tall structure. Well, it's yeah, that's just uh, what they're looking for is a siding to crawl into so they stay right. warm. Hiding places. That yeah. And your siding is a, is a tremendous amount of bark for them to hide into. Right. Right. But that's what they're really looking for. They're not coming into, like, their you know, invasion of the bug body snatchers or nothing. Oh, okay, so you're saying that there's not, uh, you know, a team of, of bugs coming out 
after me specifically. They haven't, they haven't looked through the sliding glass door and go, oh, look, there's two-legged feet. Oh, there we go. Christmas is coming. Oh, I bet you they have good yeah, presents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go in and get the cookies. Right. But nah, the spiders, that's not what it's about. But the spiders are coming in for... For other reasons, because they want to uh, reproduce also. Well, the spiders that are already in your house are there all year round because they're indoor spiders. Right. If you pick up a spider from indoors and throw him outside during the wintertime, he's going to die. <laughs> we, we had a caller call in. They didn't want to go on the air, but they said that what they do is they bury a pie, pin, a pie, pie pan tin full of beer about half inch into the soil. And yeah. kill slugs. Right, and that's exactly what we, uh, yeah, that's yep. the beer trap that works out perfectly. That it sounds like, oh my gosh, that's, a, that's one of those wives' tales, but this is scientifically researched and it is actually a, a OSU approved uh, way of controlling. It actually population. is, but as, as we said, you don't have to feed them good beer. No. They're, they're cheap drunks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Because the, the, the more yeast that's in the beer, the more effective it is. They don't care about the hops and the grains, and, and they don't, certainly don't care about the alcohol. They're, they're going for the yeast um, percentage right. in the beer. That's why the quick beer, uh, you can actually make your own home beer uh, slug bait if you're, if you're into it. Uh, you don't have to go waste. Right. You just use some yeast and uh, yeah. throw that in. Yeah, and they'll, they'll go right after it and drown. <laughs> I love it. I d no, I, I know you love it, and I love that you love it because you're very passionate about this. This like this is one of your vectors. This is one of your your things that you just have to go after. Like I, I have my starlings. Never met my, a slug I, I wanted to take home lions. for dinner. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we used to uh, live in a in a second growth forest over by Oregon City, and I made the mistake of leaving the cat food out on the deck. And slugs really love cat food. Wow. I, I have no that. idea why, but something in their little mind. Probably because it's there. But we had the biggest forest banana slugs I had ever seen in my life. These suckers were like six to eight inches long just laying there munching on the cat food. And then when they'd crawl up across the sliding glass door, they'd stretch out like 10, 12 inches long. Yeah. Scare the Jesus out of the kids. But they'd scare me. I mean, especially the first time I saw one when I moved here. They're just enormous, like more enormous than any snail, anything that I have ever seen that is that that slimy. That oh, yeah, and then the kids are screaming, Daddy, Daddy, make it go away, and you got to go out and pick the silly thing off the window. Nah. <laughs> Heavy gauge paper towels. I don't think I've ever actually, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I touch them. I don't touch them. That's what sticks are for. Nah, like I said, heavy gauge paper towels yeah. is as friendly as I get. Yeah, that'll work too. But bugs are, are amazing in the wintertime because you don't see many of them except for the, oh, the ground beetles and things that are active all year long. And even they go hide underneath your deck if it's going to get nasty weather. But uh, a lot of bugs can create their own antifreeze. Did you know that? I did know that. They, they produce a glycol composition which actually is a, a composite of most antifreeze even like what you use in your car and is there are there are many uh science uh researchers out there trying to figure out how to harness the power of reproducing this kind of thing too so it's it's pretty interesting that they it's so that it's like their pipes, like we were talking yeah. about clean, cleaning out your pipes. It's so that their pipes don't burst because <laughs> their skeleton is on their outside and it could very easily uh, water expand and then right. burn. <laughs> but they, that's, how they, that's how they overwinter, and then they just shut down. They, they literally just, nature flicks a switch and they, they go dormant. Uh, the little potato bugs, they roll up in a ball and you find them, you know, in like little black BBs. And this would be a helpful feature for us if we could, uh, you know, for space travel or something where, where we'd have long <laughs> voyages where we would be able to just <laughs> just, just shut down and then start having yeah. a glycol kick in. Uh, yeah. Oh, when, when I find out NASA's researching potato bugs, then I'm going to know we've <laughs> gone over the hill. <laughs> Everything must be explored. Uh, one thing you want to do watch out for, though, is what they call aggressive house spiders that are sometimes hobo spiders 
and they're one of the few. Most spiders don't really bite people. If you have little red marks, that's some other kind of bug in your house is biting you, either a, um, an animal flea or something of that nature. Um, most spiders don't even think humans taste good, and they're not blood suckers. Most fleas don't think that humans taste good, too. Not too much. Right. But if you do have a suspicious-looking spider that you haven't seen in your house before, and there's dozens of varieties that live in, in houses. They, they live in uh, uh, foundations and under your house, and sometimes they get up in the house and you catch one crawling across the tub. Uh, most of these guys are fairly harmless to humans. But if you do get a, a hobo, he's, he's really easy to distinguish from your regular brown house spiders because he has what looked like a little antenna on the front of his head. And on the end of the antennas are these little palps. They look like little boxing gloves. That's the male, right? That's the male. I'm looking at this picture of it right now, and it looks like he has a mustache or something at the at the end of these things. But yeah, you're right. They're, they're little boxing gloves, but put together, it's like a little mustache. Yeah, but the boxing gloves is his, his, his sex parts. organs. Right, that's his parts. That, yeah, that's that's his 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 big guy. Right, and that's what they actually deposit their part of the program when they find with the, the mama female. spider. Right, right, and then they go off, and then the male dies. Uh, just it just dies. Yeah, that's that kind of happens to all of us. <laughs> 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 that's true. You just uh, you, you just reproduce. I don't want to come back as a praying mantis because they, them them suckers get eaten by the by no, the. You, you'd rather the the slow, long thirty year death, or or instead of the the. the I'll instant. I'll take my eighty five and crawl in the coffee can. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and just pull the lid down on top of my head. I'm good. <laughs> So hobo spiders, those are those are dangerous, and those are the ones that get the bad rap. And yeah. uh, it's really important to be able to I, I think identify that. So if you if you if you haven't seen one, just go find a picture of it, just, just so that you're not confusing it with with anything else that that might be out there and less harm harmful. they they do bite humans, and they can raise a welt that's an inch to two inches in diameter, even if you're not normally allergic to bug bites. They can they can raise heck with you pretty quick, um, and that can be distinguished from normal mosquito bites or flea bites or or other carpet beetles or anything like that. Uh, so we're gonna are we? Yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna take a break right now. Yep. Um, we are on the web right now at klyc.us. It'll take you to a link at uh, organpulse.com, but you can also give us a call. Right here at uh, 503-435-1260. We're going to be around for a few more minutes. We're going to take a break right now. This is To the Root of It right here on KLYC. What are you saving for? It's a good question because big dreams are financed by smart savings. And there is no better time to start saving than when you are young. That's why First Federal waives all service fees and minimum balance requirements for account holders under 18. So skip or run to First Federal because your big dreams of tomorrow really do start with saving today. Your friends at First Federal are ready to help you invest in your tomorrows. First Federal, we're here for you. Pete Talbot here again for Cannon Beach Conference Center with a great idea for your family this Thanksgiving. How about four days and three nights starting off with an incredible Thanksgiving feast followed by excellent Bible teaching by Dr. Ron Allen from Dallas Theological Seminary. Plus tons of fun and terrific programs for the kids from nursery through high school. A truly memorable Thanksgiving at Cannon Beach. Call for more information. 1-800-745-1546 or go online at C bcc.net it's one thing to read about history it's quite another to listen to it from the people who made history the people who lived through it and then hear them tell the story in their own words such an event is coming up at the evergreen aviation and space museum november 4th through the 7th 40 world war ii veterans will be sharing their stories 15 XPOWs, prisoners of war, from the defenders of Bataan and Corregidor will be there as well. The week will include presentations by the veterans to the public and area students. There will be two showings of the documentary Never the Same, A Prisoner of War Experience, Monday, November 4th from 3 to 5 p.m. 
and Thursday, November 7th, from 6 to 8 p.m. Emmy Award-winning director of the film Jan Thompson will be at both events. Actress Loretta Swit, known as Hot Lips Houlihan from the MASH TV show, will be there on Monday the 4th. Cost to attend either showing is $10, seating is limited, and you can RSVP at Evergreen's website, evergreenmuseum.org. KOYC will be covering the event, streaming some of it with live video on our websites, but we encourage you to see it in person. Living History Week, November 4th through the 7th, at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in McMinnville. It started with four friends, 10 days, 1,200 miles, a long, lonely highway to nowhere. And it looks like it ended with one pretty flat tire. But don't worry, here at Les Schwab, we can get you fixed up and back on your road trip in no time. Because every tire we sell comes with lifetime protection, including free flat repairs, pre-trip safety checks, and more. Plus a great price. That's our best tire value promise. Mind blown. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. And welcome back, Yamhill County. You're listening to The Root of It right here on KLYC. I'm Kyle. Over there, that's Ray. And <laughs> and I say over there because some people can actually see us streaming because we're on KLYC.us, also OregonPulse.com. And, uh, we, we do have one follow-up on last week's program. But we, mu- we had a program last week that covered mushrooms, mushrooms which yep. was really great and, and uh, always a, a timely topic when we start the, the rains. And especially now that the rains have come and the mushrooms are going to really start being plentiful, if you're interested in picking your own mushrooms, there's a really, really neat program s- Sunday, this Sunday at noon at the Library Annex. Uh, a guy by the name of Jake is going, who is a uh, fungal specialist. Uh, it's not only his hobby, he actually travels all over Oregon photographing mushrooms. And he, he authors the, the bio... Uh, the Biota Bits. Thank you. The Biota Bits uh, newsletter, uh, which can be found on the web, too. It's right. really great. But he's going to uh, give a lecture and demonstration on how to identify edible mushrooms. Oh, no demonstration. Oh, wait. Are we talking about the tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow is just an identification. It's yeah. just going to be strictly, you, you have a, a mushroom, you want it identified, bring it in. Yep. Bring it in in a paper bag, and, and they should have the experts there. They'll have numerous examples. Other people will be bringing right. in mushrooms, too, so you won't be the only person there with a brown bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope not. No. Uh, and it's at noon tomorrow at the McMinnville Library Annex. And it's a really great uh, and it's source. Free. it's free. That's what it's a really great source for because it's free. And uh, for if you've got that, that moist area in your garden or in your lawn and you've got these, these funguses sprouting out, perfect time to have them identified. There will also be examples of what not to eat. Oh, I hope so. Yes. There there will be um, pictures and maybe even some, some specimens that... Uh, you can look at, but it's it's going to be a uh, fabulous explanation session of because Oregon is so rich in in edible mushrooms. Uh, it's at nine dollars a pound to start. Wow! If you go to Safeway, I just went and bought some. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I use that figure. Nine ninety five a pound. Yeah, uh, for the specialty mushrooms, right? That's not the that's not the white or the the brown, right? Yeah, that was just plain old creminis. I kind of went, ouch, okay, you know. Yeah. But we apparently we really need to have the mushroom soup, so it's uh, it's going to be delicious. <laughs> I'm absolutely certain I will not be putting any of that down the drain. I can tell you that. Right, not at that price. Not at that <laughs> price, no. But anyway, Jake will have a. a uh, uh, per- I was going to say performance, but it's. <laughs> but Jake will be there to answer your questions that you have on on them. And again, he he does the biota bits. Yeah. Uh, B i o t a b i t s uh, newsletter, uh, local, and uh, talks about the field trips that they go on. Uh, really great source. 
We do have a, a couple of natural things that you can do for, for slug prevention that don't involve chemicals. Slugs do eat funguses, too. So to segue back into the slugs, uh, the, the slugs are also eating those mushrooms, too. Really? So, so if you have natural barriers, what are some of those natural barriers? To well, them from uh, getting perhaps your, your mushroom crop. Lava, lava rock and really coarse bark dust, uh, like hog fuel. It makes it very uncomfortable for them to crawl to your plants. So the coarser the compost, actually, the better it is. So if you can get something that you can aesthetically still pleasing to the eye. So could you explain hog fuel um, for the people that don't know exactly oh. what? Because it is neither, right? Oh, 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 I should, I should. Uh, when, they, when they peel the logs prior to going into the sawmill, they peel all the bark off through big drum... Uh, machines that that actually grind the bark off the bark dust that is like the beauty bark that you pay like 35 bucks a yard for is sifted out of the bark the coarser grind that may include small sticks and larger chunks of bark is called hog fuel because that used to go into the steam boilers of which power the, plants which for sawmills the hog is the big grinder upper. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Now it all makes sense. It's not a hog like a pig. It's, no, no, it's no, no. It's a no, nickname no. referencing a hog, but it is perfect. It's a giant, very noisy machine, trust me. Awesome. Uh, and hog fuel and also makes slugs. great bedding for, for horses and cattle. And because slugs it, don't like it. Because it, it's coarse nature and it's very durable. And it lasts a really long time. It's not like the the fur beauty bark that we really enjoy looking at, the nice orangey brown material, hog fuel is very coarse and it breaks down very slowly. So once you've put it out, you don't have to use this as a flower dressing. F For two years or three uh, two years. Two or three years. Right. You can go out and just rake it and it looks good again. Uh, uh, as soon as the uh, uh, outer layer gets kind of gray colored from sun bleaching, you can just rake it, stir it up, and it still gives nice texture to the flower beds and things of that nature. And I can see that... And slugs hate it. And because it's coarse, right? Yeah. So, so what else are, are they hating? Because I've heard that you, you can put down the eggshells, and yeah, that, that can work, that, but cost-effectively, I mean, unless you have tons of eggshells to be laying out, it's, it's kind of, it's not going to be really effective. Well, here's, here's one that's actually a good reason to have a sweet gum tree, is those spiny little seed pods that fall off of it. You will not find slugs crawling around under a sweet gum tree. Ah, because the, of the little texture. spines pierce their body when they try to crawl across them. Nice. We like, say nice. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think it's quite nice. Right. Um, so if you have a sweet gum tree and you have the little seed pods on the ground, and it's not a place where your kids are going to walk barefoot. Or your pet's going to want to go. It'll also keep pets away from things, too, because the spines are horrible. They, they pierce quite easily. Yeah. Um, cedar, oak bark chips, and coarse ground gravel are very, very unpleasant for slugs. So they make great flower garden dressings. So anyway, those are some things that you can use that aren't poison. That are not poison, and they're just roughly textured, so... Yeah. You probably don't want to go slithering in them either. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for that hog fuel thing, though. That really does... Uh, because I had, had heard that it is uh, what the bark does, but some of these terms that uh, they, they are getting passed around are, are just not, nah. not known. So it's just Got to really clarify. You've got to define those things, yeah. Well, that's about it for us for today. We thank you all for tuning in. That's right. You've been listening to The Root of It right here on KLYC, uh, streaming at klyc.us. Um, happy slug killing. Happy slug killing. If you have any questions, the, the phone number here is always 503-435-1260. Um, great show, Ray. And, and don't forget the extension office. The number there is 503-434-7517. And it's located at 2050 Northeast Lafayette Avenue in McMinnville. And it's a resource that everybody in Yamhill County can use. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, we will be back here next week, uh, as we are always, our, for your weekly Yamhill County gardening show, very specific to Yamhill County, right here on KLYC 1260 AM. We play your music, KLYC McMinnville Lafayette. ABC News Now, I'm Joan Bennett. Flights are getting back on schedule after yesterday's lockdown at LAX. No word on the condition of 23-year-old Paul Ciencia, the man suspected of opening fire at Los Angeles International Airport, killing...